Reports are emerging that DeAndre Ayton is on the verge of signing an offer sheet with the Indiana Pacers, which could be a huge problem for the Phoenix Suns, but could actually help the Toronto Raptors in a bunch of ways. So in today's video, we're going to discuss how this affects the Kevin Durant sweepstakes and how this might make the Raptors the favorites to trade for the Brooklyn Nets' wannaway superstar. Let's get into it. What's going on NBA and Raptors fans, it's Jacob here back with Amateur Hour Sports for another Toronto Raptors YouTube video. On this channel, I bring you the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news, and I'm doing it all throughout the offseason, so make sure you are subscribed to Amateur Hour Sports. We just hit 10,000 subscribers. We're not stopping here. We're already on our way to 11,000 subscribers, and you can help us get there in return. You're getting all this great Raptors content, and if you find yourself enjoying this video along the way, be sure to drop a like because we want to hit 250. 50 likes on today's video but what we want to discuss today is DeAndre Aiden and the possibility of him signing an offer sheet with the Indiana Pacers now I've been patient about putting this video out so I've kind of been waiting for him to actually sign the offer sheet because it does seem like it is imminent. And I hope by the time this video comes out, he has not signed it. But just keep in mind that this video is in regards to him possibly signing that offer sheet. But even if he has signed it at this point when the video is out, the points in this video will remain the same and will remain relevant. Because DeAndre Ayton, all throughout the year, we've talked about his problems with the Phoenix Suns. He wanted to get the max contract from the Phoenix Suns, and the Suns simply were not going to give it to him. Now, I don't know of any other team in the NBA would want to give him that max contract but regardless it seems like the relationship with the Phoenix Suns is one that is not going to be repaired and therefore the Suns are prepared to move on from Aiden now the idea for the Phoenix Suns was that they were going to move on from DeAndre Aiden by giving him in a sign and trade to the Brooklyn Nets in a trade that would involve the Wanaway star Kevin Durant going back to the Phoenix Suns he has expressed that his preferred destination is the Phoenix Suns but the Suns, who are not going to trade Booker, nor can they trade Booker, are probably going to stay out of that discussion involving Booker. So DeAndre Ayton might be the centerpiece of a trade that would actually bring Kevin Durant to the Suns. But DeAndre Ayton kind of understands that he doesn't really owe the Phoenix Suns anyway. And as a restricted free agent, he has the capability to sign an offer sheet that Indiana may throw his way. And what happens with an offer sheet is that if Indiana throws the offer sheet, he signs the offer sheet, the Phoenix Suns will then have two days to match that offer sheet or else he is free to just go play with the Indiana Pacers next season. Now, the problem here is that the Phoenix Suns, like I said, are trying to use DeAndre Ayton as a trade chip in order to land Kevin Durant. But if Indiana were to give DeAndre Ayton that offer sheet and Phoenix Suns were to match it, they wouldn't be able to trade Aiden until December 15th. And the way things are going with Brooklyn, as far as it goes with Kevin Durant, as far as it goes especially with Kyrie Irving, I don't know if they're going to be willing to wait that long to actually execute a trade there. So Phoenix could be out of the running completely to get Kevin Durant. But of course, if they don't want to match the offer sheet because they don't want to pay DeAndre Ayton the money, and obviously the relationship, like I said, is tarnished, well, then he leaves for nothing and goes to the Indiana Pacers. But it seems like, according to Brian Windhorst, who has been pretty on the money with his reports all throughout the offseason so far, he has mentioned that the Indiana Pacers and their ownership are interested in actually executing a sign and trade with the Phoenix Suns because the ownership in Indiana, they don't want to hurt the Phoenix Suns. They, the owners there, they don't want to hurt their fellow owners in the NBA. I mean, it's just kind of soft in my book. But nonetheless, the Pacers are looking to execute a sign and trade. And based on the fact that all these reports kind of spinning about DeAndre Aiden, I believe the signing of the offer sheet is imminent. But I believe that we're kind of delaying this announcement because the Pacers are looking to execute a sign and trade with the Phoenix Suns, which would likely include Miles Turner going to the Phoenix Suns. I mean, the Suns losing their center. They're going to get a center in return. Now, there are multiple ways in which this affects the Toronto Raptors. First of all, you know, if Aiden signs the offer sheet, he either goes to Indiana and Phoenix don't have him anymore or Phoenix can't trade him until December 15th. Therefore, the Raptors, who are probably the second most likely team to trade for Kevin Durant, would now be the favorite to land Kevin Durant because Phoenix Suns would be out of the running. Now, people online are saying, well, the Suns can still trade for Kevin Durant even without DeAndre Ayton. And to that, I say, who? Who would they trade other than DeAndre Ayton? They have Mikhail Bridges, yes. They have Cam Johnson, yes. That is not enough to get Kevin Durant. I'm sorry. Like, if you're talking about OG and Gary Trent not being enough to get Kevin Durant, 
you're not going to get him with Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson. That's just absolutely not going to happen. You're not going to trade Devin Booker. We know that. You're not going to trade Chris Paul, nor do I think the Brooklyn Nets will be interested in getting Chris Paul. Uh, who else are you going to trade in order to make that thing happen? If the Suns don't have DeAndre Ayton as a trade ship, they are simply not going to acquire Kevin Durant through a trade. The Raptors would be able to better that offer with just OG and Anobi and Gary Trent Jr. Now, I've mentioned in previous videos, we've talked about it so much, I don't think any team in the NBA is offering more than OG and Anobi and Gary Trent Jr. in order to acquire the services of Kevin Durant on that four-year contract. Like, Who's getting better than that? And, you know, there was an arguable case that it was Aiden and Mikhail Bridges. And if those guys are off the table, if DeAndre Aiden is off the table, then nobody is going to be able to match that offer. I think based on the way I've described in the trade reports over the last week or so involving Kevin Durant and the Raptors, I don't want to like gas myself up or anything, but it has been extremely accurate here. The Brooklyn Nets have not been very satisfied with any of the offers coming their way because they're asking for the world and teams know they do not have to give the world first of all, nor do they want to give the world. Kevin Durant is coming off of a bunch of injuries. Teams are not going to be able to trade everything possible in order to get him. The Raptors have absolutely no interest in trading Scotty Barnes to get Kevin Durant. That's the indication I've gotten out of everything we've seen so far. Pascal Siakam, could be on the table, but it's not necessary to put him on the table because no other team in the NBA seems to want to put a player even really close to the caliber of Pascal Siakam in these trade discussions. So if the Suns don't have DeAndre Ayton, the Raptors are in the driver's seat. And unless Brooklyn just want to keep Kevin Durant, they may have to turn to the Raptors for the best possible offer. Then there won't be a lot of competition with the Raptors. Now, Brooklyn, of course, can just say, no, we'll keep on to Kevin Durant. You know what? We're not getting the offers that we want to see. We're just going to keep Kevin Durant. He's going to show up to training camp. We're going to see what happens next season. I mean, sure, Brooklyn can do that because the Raptors at this point would just be like, okay, I mean, go ahead. The Raptors are in no position to kind of panic with this situation. We're comfy with the core that we have, and we're comfortable to just run it back with the same core and watch them continue to develop, continue to develop together. That's not really a problem. We have time on our side with this team. The Brooklyn Nets do not have time on their side here. You know, Kyrie Irving's on that one-year deal, and then he's gone. But Kevin Durant asked for a trade, and unless he just kind of retracts that, he's not going to be very happy playing in Brooklyn. That's just going to be a bad situation that just continues to get worse and worse and worse as they just allow it to continue to unfold with Durant on their team. So I continue to say it's probably within their best interest to trade Kevin Durant, though I'm like, they're likely saying that, you know, they don't want to trade Kevin Durant unless it's a good price because they're just trying to keep his value up. I think they want to get rid of him absolutely by the end of July. But I mean, unless they're going to get a good offer, they're saying they're going to hang on to him. I don't think they're just going to take any offer, but they're trying to hold what leverage they have left in this situation. I've been talking about how Brooklyn don't have a ton of leverage in these negotiations. People called me out. People called me an idiot for saying that. I mean, we're watching it unfold before our very eyes. Now, the situation does change if Miles Turner returns to the Phoenix Suns through this sign and trade. I think they're able to execute you know, a sign and trade maybe involving Brooklyn, but then you know, Miles Turner would have to go to the Brooklyn Nets or something along those lines. I mean, is Miles Turner as valuable as DeAndre Aiden? No, absolutely not. 100% absolutely not on the same value as DeAndre Aiden. So even if Miles Turner returns to the Phoenix Suns, like, you know, cool for the Phoenix Suns, they get a decent player there, but that still keeps them out of the Kevin Durant sweepstakes, in my opinion. Like, that still really limits what they can do involving a Kevin Durant trade. Now, if Miles Turner is going to the Phoenix Suns, and maybe they don't have a ton of interest in keeping Miles Turner... This is another opportunity for the Raptors to step in for this situation. Miles Turner is a player that I'm sure the Raptors are interested in, and Raptors fans have spoken about their interest in acquiring Miles Turner for years and years and years, especially at the most recent trade deadline. So maybe, just maybe, you know, we were discussing possible rumors about the Raptors landing DeAndre Ayton and all this Kevin Durant nonsense. Well, how about the Raptors landing... Miles Turner and all this nonsense, that wouldn't be a bad outcome to this situation. The Raptors would improve. They would get a really good center here. Not like a really, really good center, but, you know, a quality floor spacing center, a guy who protects the rim at an absolute elite level, one of the best at protecting the rim in the entire NBA, a good score on the interior, a very good rebounder. That would be a great pickup for the Raptors, but I can't really see a feasible way that unfolds. I would just like to mention that here because I think it is 100% possible that the Raptors insert themselves in these discussions in some way. And I'd be really surprised if Indiana and Phoenix haven't been on the phone with the Raptors at all involving, you know, this DeAndre Ayton sign and trade going to the Indiana Pacers. Regardless of what happened with this situation involving DeAndre Ayton, 
it very much seems like the Suns are in a very bad position. They wanted to sort this out with Kevin Durant before this came to fruition before any of this started to happen. But DeAndre Ayton owes the Suns nothing. He does not have to be patient and wait for this. He just wants to sort out his future. He wants to get paid. If Indiana are going to pay him, he is going to sign that offer sheet. I believe the Indiana Pacers are looking for a sign and trade because they can't quite afford all of the money that DeAndre Ayton is likely to get. They're probably looking for a sign and trade with the Phoenix Suns, maybe involving some other teams. But what this really means involving the Kevin Durant sweepstakes is Phoenix are in a very tough situation as it comes to acquiring Kevin Durant. Their likelihood of acquiring him, in my opinion, has diminished significantly. Based on that diminishing probability they get Kevin Durant, the Raptors probability of landing him has upgraded. The Raptors, in my opinion, are even more likely to trade with Kevin Durant. Now, I'm not saying that's extremely likely. I'm not saying it's more likely than not they're going to get Kevin Durant, but the Raptors are all of a sudden in a much better position. I think the most likely outcome is that Brooklyn are going to hold out for as long as possible, and I think they're going to wait for Kevin Durant to either really push for this trade to happen or just kind of pray that he just sits back a little bit and decides, okay, you know what? Like, I don't want to deal with all this stuff. Let's just run it back in Brooklyn. I find the former a lot more likely, but Brooklyn are in a tough situation. They're not getting the offers that they wanted to get. I mean, they're asking for this these absolutely outrageous prices in order to get Kevin Durant. Like, they're going to be asking for the entire Raptors roster, it seems, to get Kevin Durant. But ultimately, all of these negotiations eventually start to work towards the middle. Phoenix, without DeAndre Ayton or the ability to trade him, I really can't see them making that trade happen. I Like, almost impossible to me for them to make that trade happen. I can't see Brooklyn waiting until December 15th if they match the offer sheet for DeAndre Ayton. The Raptors were already in a good position to land Kevin Durant, and their position just got even better. So what do you make of these Kevin Durant sweepstakes? Do you agree with my take so far? We've talked about this so much just because it's relevant news and there isn't a ton of news around the Raptors right now, but there's all this stuff going on. And I feel like, honestly, I have been pretty accurate with my assessment of all these situations so far. I guess we'll see how it unfolds, I'll have egg on my face or not. But thank you so much for watching this video. Please, if you did enjoy, be sure to drop a like. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. When you drop a like, it lets YouTube know that other viewers out there may enjoy this video who have not seen it yet, and it's recommended to more people. It takes you a second to like the video, but it helps me out a ton. And make sure if you're new and you want to continue to see the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news, that you are subscribed to Amateur Sports. Help us on a road to a 11,000 subscribers and I promise I'll keep you entertained all throughout the offseason. Watch my Twitch stream tonight as we watch on the Raptors Summer League game. We go live at 4.45 Eastern time. Hope to see you there. Link in the description for that. Make sure to follow us there so you're notified when I go live and I'll see you again next time for another video.